friends, my name is Sitlali and I'm so happy to see you here. If you are new to Lifehouse Kids, welcome! And if you are tuning back, so nice to see you again. We've got a lot of fun planned for you as we close out our look on faith. <laughs> can see because of what you can see. All summer long, we've been talking about how we can focus on trusting God. From the beginning to the very end of the Bible, we have seen countless stories of people who've had faith when times were very tough. They put their trust in what they couldn't see because of what they could see. They trusted that God was with them. They saw the things that God had done for them and for others throughout all history. And they decided that they could trust God even when things were very hard. Our bottom lines this month helped us remember to keep our faith in God. Let's see if you remember. Let's play a game. I'm going to ask if the correct bottom line is either A or B. For A, I want you to use sign language A like this. If the correct bottom line is B, I want you to use sign language B, like this. Are you ready? Here we go! On the first week, did we learn A, Jesus is a gift for everyone, or B, Jesus is a gift for a few? Of course, A, Jesus is for everyone. Good job. Ready for the next one? The second week, did we learn A, you can help others know how to pray, or B, you can help others know Jesus? That was a tricky one. I hope you chose B. Finally, in week three, did we learn A, Knowing everyone helps you solve your problems? Or B, knowing Jesus changes the way you see your problems? Correct! B! Great job, everyone! I wonder what our last bottom line will be. Well, stay with us because in today's Bible story, we'll hear about a man who was sent to an island. But before we get to that, join me today as we get ready to worship God together. I've got a reason to keep believing through whatever comes my way. Cause I put my hope and trust.
everybody, I'm Erica, and welcome to my Steve Lab. I've got something extra special to show you today, and I have faith that it will be my coolest discovery yet. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And what I can see is this awesome telescope! Ooh. I'm living! Wow. I am super excited for what we'll be able to see through this telescope. Stars, planets, galaxies, satellites, space exploring cats. Well, maybe not the cats. There's a skylight in the lab. So I can see all the cool stuff from right here. I just have to finish focusing the telescope. Okay, while I focus on the telescope, why don't you guys focus on the awesome Bible story today? <laughs> it's out of this world. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 3 to 5. John squinted against the blinding glare of the afternoon sun. Just a short distance away, frothy waves crashed against craggy rocks and foamed over white sands. This island of Patmos was isolated and rocky, but the view was stunning, surrounded by brilliant blue sea and sky. Most beautiful prison on earth. Though he wasn't chained up, John was in jail. The Roman emperor who was unable to make John stop preaching about Jesus had exiled him to this prison colony where many prisoners worked in the mines. There was no way off the island. So John was now very old, living out his final years on the island of Patmos with a handful of criminals. I can share the story of Jesus with them too. John settled into a shallow cave on shore to take shelter from the heat. He closed his eyes. I've seen so much. John had lived longer than any of the other of Jesus' disciples. He had watched the early church grow while the story of Jesus spread fast and bright as wildfire. But he had also seen terrible things happen to those who believed in Jesus. In fact, many people died just for talking about Jesus. We saw everything Jesus did. We can believe he'll be with us forever, even through death. Despite the threats and persecution, more people than ever were following Jesus. God's story was traveling from one end of the world to the other, just like Jesus said it would. I wonder why I've been allowed to live this long. In the cool of the shallow cave, John began to relax. His head was nodding. Until a voice like a trumpet sounded behind him. Write on a scroll what you see. John blinked. Was he awake or dreaming? Wait, what? Uh, I don't see. Oh. Turning, John saw Jesus himself, his eyes blazing with intensity. Do not be afraid. I was dead. But look, I am alive forever and ever. Write about what is happening now and what will happen later. John's mind worked quickly, trying to grasp what was happening. It appeared that God was trying to show him a picture of things that would happen in the future, and he wanted John to write them down and show them to others so that they could believe too. Yes, Lord. Do you mind if I grab a scroll? Oh, and a quill. I don't want to forget anything. John watched, amazed, as God showed him many things that were coming. Some were wonderful, some were terrible, some were mysterious. After the vision ended, John began a letter to several of the new churches. I, John, am writing this. I am a friend who suffers like you, 
As members of Jesus' royal family, we can put up with anything that happens to us. John explained every strange and amazing thing he had seen. Some of it made him tremble. Others wouldn't make sense until the right time had come. But the last part of his vision... That's the very best part. I can't wait to write all about it. God had shown John how the whole story will turn out for everyone who believes in Jesus. Carefully, he recalled all the incredible things he'd seen. How am I going to do this? I mean, there's no way that words can capture it. But I have to try. It's just a picture until they get to see for themselves how real and breathtaking it will be. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. John remembered the words that Jesus had spoken while he was on earth, right before his death and return to life. There are many rooms in my father's house. I am going there to prepare a place for you. If I go and do that, I will come back and I will take you to be with me. Then you will also be where I am. That's what I saw. It's the special place Jesus is making for each one of us. A place where we will never be apart from God. John recalled the next scene from his vision. He saw a great white throne. I heard a loud voice from the throne. It said, now God makes his home with people. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or sadness. There will be no more crying or pain. John paused as he stared in wonder at what he had just written down. All of these terrible things we've seen, people sick and hurt, being mocked and put in jail, all of it will be made right. Something else stood out to John. Light. There was so much light. The city does not need the sun or moon to shine on it. God's glory is its light. And the Lamb, Jesus, is its lamp. Its gates will never be shut because there will be no night there. The place John had seen wasn't just filled with light. It was beautiful, too. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life. It was as clear as crystal. It flowed from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the middle of the city's main street. On each side of the river stood the tree of life. Its fruit was ripe every month. The leaves of the tree bring healing to the nations. Once again, John lifted his pen from the page. It just seemed impossible to share the real glory of what he had seen with tiny black marks on a scroll. He tried again. God's servants will serve him. They will see his face. John felt himself grinning. He could say one thing for sure, no one would be bored. He and every other person who believes in God would finally be able to live out what they were created to do, fully and completely with no sin or frustration or weariness to get in the way. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people, amen. Now, John didn't know exactly when the things God had shown him would take place, and neither do we. But from what we've seen and heard, we know one thing for certain. In the end, God will make everything right for those who trust in him. Whoa! Would you look at that? That doesn't look like cheese at all. <laughs> I love getting a glimpse at things I'm not used to seeing every day. Like today's story, we got a little glimpse of what the future could be like. When Jesus was on earth, he said if anyone puts their faith in him, they'll have a relationship with God that will last forever. That means we can be a part of God's big story, a story that never ends. Now, I don't know what you imagine when you think about heaven. Maybe it's clouds and harps and angels flying around. Maybe what you imagine is exactly right. Though there's a lot about the future we don't understand, it's exciting to think about the things we do know. When we believe in Jesus, we can look forward to a time when there will be no more pain, no more sadness, everything will be made new. We will be fully alive with God in a way we can't even imagine. That's the one thing to remember today. Following Jesus will turn out greater than you can imagine.
Having a glimpse at the future can give us hope here in the present. When we're worried about something or someone, or when we're sad or in pain, we know the bad things won't last forever. God has a future plan for us that we can truly focus on. Speaking of, let's see what this thing is focused on now. <gasps> I don't believe it! Space cats! Oh. <laughs> gotcha! Thanks for hanging with me in the lab and keep focusing on the important stuff. See you later! It's difficult to imagine what our forever home with God will be like. There's a lot we don't know, but it helps to focus on what we do know. And our memory verse this month clearly teaches us that. This week, we will have Ethan who will help us practice our memory verse. Over to you, Ethan. Hi, Lifehouse Kids. I'm Ethan, and I'm so excited to be with you today. Let's go ahead and practice our memory verse. It says, God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. Ephesians 2, 8. Let's say that together. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. Ephesians 2, 8. Awesome job, everyone. Thanks, Ethan. Now, Jesus made it clear that when we put our faith in Him, we can have a relationship with God that will last forever. We can be part of God's big story. Because of that promise, we can live with our confidence and joy no matter what happens. We know that God's plan is good and His love for us will last forever. Now, I'm going to turn it over to Juliet, who will help us learn our bottom line for this week. Take it over, Juliet. Hi, everyone. Let's go ahead and practice this week's bottom line. It says, following Jesus will turn out greater than you can imagine. Can you say that with me? Following Jesus will turn out greater than you can imagine. Wonderful job, Lifehouse Kids. Thanks, Juliet. The hope of a forever home with God helps us live here today. It helps us when someone who we love dies. Everyone who knows Jesus will spend forever with him. So death is not the end. It helps us when we're scared and worried about the future because we know that the ending will be amazing and perfect beyond anything we can even begin to understand. It helps us when we realize that things aren't yet like they should be because we know that God has promised to make all things right. Following Jesus will turn out greater than we can even imagine. We have an amazing future where everything will be made right and we will be with God forever. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the amazing vision that you gave John. Even though we don't know when things will happen or exactly how they will take place, we know that we can trust you no matter what. Please help us have faith and trust you because we know that following you will turn out even greater than we can imagine. We ask that you come into our hearts and live inside of us. May your Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us. We love you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. And that's it, everyone. Be sure to click the link for activities to help you throughout the week. And don't forget to click the subscribe button to follow and to get the most up-to-date midweek devotionals and Sunday's online experience videos. And on behalf of Lighthouse Kids team, we miss you and we hope to see you very soon. God bless.